I had no control of my body at that time. Take the fuck off and see my baby, come on. A vicious attack. What was that? Did it come from upstairs? Ali. I've just had a message. I'm waiting. I can see a graveyard. He's right here. It's making me feel sick. Yeah. This week, the rescue mediums visit a home on Baylor Drive in Brampton. Inside, the homeowners worry that an otherworldly presence has infiltrated their lives and has begun tormenting their middle daughter. The day when Karen was possessed, well, it was really nerve-wracking. I'd never seen anything like this. You hear me? Come on, come on, come on. Speak up now, come on. I had this weird feeling with uh, anger, sadness, uh, desperation. It's your papa talking to you, my baby. Come on. I had no control over my body at that time, so I don't know what I could have done. It went to this point where she started screaming, let me go, let me go. Thank you, my Let me go! Oh, not going anywhere, my baby. Let me go. Hoping to hitch a ride, the rescue mediums are on their way to help. You know, I what is that? I don't know. Oh! We cracked it. We are. Jackie and Allison are renowned psychic mediums who spend their days and nights showing wayward spirits into the light. I had a dream where someone grabbed my foot and was dragging me, and when I woke up, there was a mark on my foot. She wakes up with bruises on her skin, her arms, her legs. That is a concern for me. It's not a pleasant feeling at all. The rescue mediums have been given no prior knowledge of their destination. I don't think he knows where he's going. Even the location has been kept secret until now. Although days earlier, they had some eerie premonitions. First thing I got is feeling that somebody's standing in the room watching you. Someone, a man, he had a menacing look about him. I woke up and I saw him standing at the foot of my bed staring at me. Seeing shadowy figures. I saw a shadow figure. He or she ran really quickly into the basement. Jenny. Sleep deprivation. Yes, yeah, definitely. I know I fall asleep, but the next morning I wake up, I'm tired. She cannot function. When she gets home, she's so tired, she needs to sleep in the afternoon. Clark. A vicious attack. Oh, no. Yeah, that's I know. not nice. No, I know. Let's have a look at your pics. OK. In addition to their premonitions, the rescue mediums have created these psychic drawings of what they expect to encounter during their investigation. The ladies arrive at the troubled residence where the homeowners anxiously await their assistance. I hope that they can help uh, rescue whoever is uh, wandering around in the house, and I just want to get back to normal life, and I'm just more concerned about my daughter, Kieran. <laughs> Jackie and Allison are the rescue mediums. Psychics who make house calls. Hello. Hello. Hi there. Hi. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm Tara. Hello, Tara. I'm Mira. Good Hi, to meet Mira. Okay. Marie. And Kieran. What gorgeous names. Lovely names. <laughs> Thank you. Come on in. The rescue mediums sit down with the homeowners to present their premonitions. So the first thing I have on my list is seeing spirit forms. Yeah. Is that all of you? Just her. So how long have you lived in this house? Approximately five years. So have you experienced things before that time frame? Yes. Since you were a little girl? Yeah. Somebody who's got psychic and mediumistic abilities. <laughs> we're looking at you. I'm looking directly at you. <laughs> Cold drafts and there's no explanation for that. You're going, yes, <laughs> like that. Have you all experienced yes. that? Yes, yes. <laughs> Feelings of being touched, particularly on the shoulders and the back. Yes, yes, yes. Unexplained aches and pains that come and go. Yes, yes. Okay. The feeling of somebody behind you, but there's nobody there. Yes. Okay, and, it, and this is just you that's experiencing. You've got so much going on <laughs> around you. <laughs> A vicious attack. Okay. 
Coming up, an elusive spirit leads the rescue mediums on a game of psychic hide and seek. What was that? They come from upstairs. I've just had a message. I'm waiting. The rescue mediums are investigating this home on Baylor Drive in Brampton. I had no control of my body at that time. Where a family's middle daughter has been taken over by a dark presence. A vicious attack. Jackie and Alison begin their investigation by exploring the exterior of the property. It's a bit of a step, Al. OK. I wonder why you're saying that. <laughs> Anyone would think I was clumsy. No. <laughs> this is nice. It is. Oh, yeah, I do too. Jackie, I feel like I need to stand here. Like this is a mark of respect for something or someone. Yeah. You know, mm. sort of few minutes silence. But nice, sort of very respectful. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't a horrible feeling with it. I'm seeing something totally different to what I'm looking at here. I can see a creek. Hmm, wonder if there's a creek nearby. Very interesting. Absolutely. Seeking the significance of these fragments, the rescue mediums return within the troubled residence. I've just had a message, I think, for us. Oh, really? I'm waiting. Male or female? It's indistinguishable at the moment, but I'll let you know if I get anything clearer, mm. but the words were clear. OK. I'm waiting. Waiting Where? for what? Us. Well, we're here. I know. <laughs> but odd. Don't you think it's odd? Very you know, odd. That we've not come across anything. <laughs> what was that? Did it come from upstairs? I don't know. It was like a... Was it like a scream? <laughs> Let's go upstairs, shall we? In hopes of finding the source of this psychic scream, the rescue mediums are sent to the second floor of the home. But instead of finding answers, Jackie and Alison discover yet another mystery. Holly. Water? Water's Is running. running. Oh, I've got shivers down my spine now. Look. Oh, my God. I, I, I heard it. Oh. Let's turn that on then. I've gone really cold now. Ooh. I feel I feel on edge. You're jumpy, aren't you? I am. The source of this paranormal activity proves elusive. Jackie and Alison continue their investigation. Oh, somebody there, Al, then. Following the otherworldly footsteps, the rescue mediums are drawn to the main floor of the home. Yet no entity presents itself. I feel as though it's empty, as though there should be something here. There's a void somewhere. Yeah. While Jackie and Alison sense much psychic energy, they are unable to establish direct contact with the spirit. Isn't it quiet? Isn't it still everywhere? It is. The thing is, the family, from what they've, you know, what the little bits that they've said and the premonitions, there's a lot going on. Maybe what's going on has to do with Kieran. She has a strong psychic sensitivity. I agree. Let's talk to Kieran. Jackie and Alison prepare to sit down with Kieran, the family's middle daughter for an informal interview. We've asked you to um, come and talk to us because we need to rule some things out, otherwise we can't carry on with the investigation. OK. okay. You've always been aware of the being spirit presence since you were little. Yes. You've always been aware of that. What's made it different now? What What is different about now? Now, um, it's just that I feel them more. When approximately did things start to get worse? When I got older, because I don't remember anything when I was younger, but when right. I started getting older, it escalated, I guess. And is this the strongest that you've ever felt? Yes. When you say y you see or you feel them, how do you see them? 
sometimes I just have the feeling that whoever is there is there, but on occasion I'd see a silhouette, a shadow. Could you let us know, Kieran, if you feel spirit around you in the house and out of the house, or yes. is it what? Yes. Both. You are extremely psychic, obviously, yes. and you need to learn how to control it rather than it, it being in control of you. And then you can choose uh, when you're a little bit older whether you want to pursue that and do what we do or just close the door on it and don't bother with it. Okay. In view of what you've just told us, um, if we were to say to you we think you have a spirit attachment to you, mm -hmm. how would you feel about that? Kind of a little, a little bit disturbing. Okay. Next, the rescue mediums perform an emergency spirit detachment and face off against a troubled male spirit. It's making me feel sick. Yeah. I can see a graveyard. Within this house, built in a quiet suburb of Brampton, the rescue mediums experienced a number of psychic impressions. What was that? Did it come from upstairs? But were unable to make direct contact with the presence. There should be something here. There's a void. After interviewing Kieran, Jackie and Alison were able to determine that a spirit has taken possession of this 17-year-old girl. How would you feel about that? Kind of a little, a little bit disturbing. Feeling the strength of the entity, Jackie and Allison begin a spirit detachment. Focusing their psychic energies, the rescue mediums begin the arduous task of pulling the unwanted spirit from the girl. The spirit has been removed from Kieran. Did you feel anything in your tummy there? A little bit. Yeah. A little bit, like it's just pulling? Yeah, OK, that's good. Can you see how red I've, I've yeah. gone? Yeah. That's because I've got the spirit right in my space and we're going to go and deal with this in okay. a minute and find out who this is. And we'll get it sorted. OK. OK. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Having removed the attachment from Kieran, Jackie becomes the spirit's host. The rescue mediums will now seek to divine its secrets in order to help this presence into the light. We can feel your strength. Give us more images. Help us to piece your story together. Now, I don't know if this is his name. I've just got Ben. I had Robert. I can hear, like, rasping breath. Real sort of heavy breathing. Dig in. Dig in. But it's muddy. My feet are really muddy. I can see water. Mm -hmm. But it's coming over my feet. I just heard something. I just couldn't do any more. I did my best. Oh, my God. I can see a graveyard. And the graves are covered in water. God. They're all covered in water. Ah, it's a shooting pain. There's something wrong with his leg. He's on the ground in the water and the mud. I, I think he's ready. Just heard him say, all I want to do is go home. Yeah. He's walking towards the doorway now. I'm going to open the door, all right? Mm-hmm. 
A mysterious female spirit steps forth from the light. See a lady? Mm hmm He's seen her. Walking through. The rescue begins. Rescue mediums present their findings to the homeowners and compare it to independent research. The entire downtown area was flooded. I just can't believe, I mean, like, wow. While investigating this home in Brampton, the rescue mediums performed a spirit detachment on 17-year-old Kieran. Jackie then kept the troubled male spirit with her allowing the rescue mediums to divine his troubled past. I can see a graveyard. And, with the help of a mysterious female spirit, were able to show him into the light. Walking through. Jackie and Alison sit down with the homeowners to present the results of their investigation. John and Margaret Watson came with their family to Canada from Scotland. They had seven children. Two of their sons were called Robert and Benjamin, and they were the two names that we'd been given while we were doing the rescue. Now, I don't know if this is his name. I've just got Ben. I had Robert. The person that we rescued is Benjamin. Born in 1830, Benjamin Watson came from a farming family, which owned a considerable acreage in the Brampton area. Their holdings included the land on which the homeowner's house currently sits. As we started our investigation, we started outside, and Alison felt that she had to stand as a mark of respect. Yeah, sort of a um, couple of minutes silence. She did. Yeah. Very, very appropriate uh, words that she said, because this family was so involved with their church. Benjamin Watson and his family were devout Baptists so dedicated that they even allocated a section of their land to the Ebenezer Baptist Church. He actually leased one half an acre of land to the cemetery trustees. This was known as the Ebenezer Baptist Church Cemetery. The relatives of Benjamin Watson were all buried in a private cemetery, located in this corner of their original property. These graves remain today mere blocks from the homeowner's residence. We and this the... area here, we pass every day. Yeah. Gosh. Between. We do see the graves. Mm. At one time, I said it looked so peaceful, not knowing it was a graveyard. We believe that as you've come home from there, feeling all of that, Benjamin has seen your light going past, and you've said you go past that cemetery on a daily basis. He's seen your light, and he's thought, oh, that's a nice little light. I think I'll follow that one there. The rescue mediums believed that it was Kieran's powerful psychic ability, untrained and newly discovered, that attracted the troubled spirit of Benjamin Watson. We went into the main bedroom, and in there we heard running water. There was a tap on, and the water was running freely. So we said to each other, and Drew's turn that on. Holly. Water. Who's turned that on then? And then I could see a graveyard, and the graves were being covered by water. I can see a graveyard. The graves are covered in water. Oh my God. They're all covered in water. So flooding was a great problem to this area. In August 1857, and there was flash flooding. The river burst its banks, and the creeks had burst their banks too. This is a time frame that we think he was referring to. This 1857 Brampton Times article proves that severe flooding was common during Benjamin Watson's lifetime. We feel that Benjamin was so dedicated to preserving the family burial plot that his, his spirit continued long after the time that his body had actually physically died. 
Oh, and there's something wrong with his leg as well, because I could, I could, so I had the sense of sort of somebody limping. It only happened one time. I was in bed, and all of a sudden, I had a sharp pain in my leg, and I've never had this before. I would use the term like as though a knife was being dragged through my flesh. Are you in on your leg? Yeah. Benjamin died in March of 1914. Now, what do you think he died with? He fractured his leg. Incredible. Wow. I, 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 I just that. can't believe, I mean, like, wow. Oh, no, no. As this historical document shows, the fracture of Benjamin's leg led to severe medical complications. For Benjamin Watson, the end came on March the 17th, 1914. And then a lady stepped out of the doorway. See a lady? Well, Benjamin's wife was called Janet, Jeanette, Jenny, Jenny right. Clark. Her surname was Clark before she oh, married okay. him. Benjamin's wife's maiden name was Janet Clark. Both of these names appeared on the rescue medium's premonitions. Look at all these, how it come together. And it comes right. together, yeah. makes perfect beautiful, sense. Beautiful. The spirit now safely crossed over. The rescue medium has bid farewell to the homeowner. Let's have a group hug. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you guys so much. Oh my God. Oh, you are so you. welcome. You are a lovely, lovely family. Thank you. And enjoy your home now. Yeah. All right. Thank you very Thank you. much. Yeah. You're you. welcome. Bye. 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 Their work done, the ladies seek a different sort of spirit possession. So, you know Alison, I just love it when spirit goes through into the light. I know, that light is just so wonderful. Yeah, it is. I mean, I use my hands all the time. I know you do. Why do you use your hands all the time, Jackie? Well, Alison, many hands make light work. Oh, dear me. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.